Hello, and welcome back to AP Computer Science. This is lesson 10, and today we'll be talking about strings and the methods associated with them. Okay. So first, what are strings? Strings are a sequence of characters that are stored in memory. They are indexed from 0 to the length minus 1, just like arrays, which we talked about in an earlier uh, video. And this is simply a way to represent text in a computer program. So how do we make a string? Well, uh, this method right here is probably the most commonly used and probably the preferred method. So we simply declare our string variable like we do any other variable with the type first, the variable name, the equal sign, and then this time uh, we have the string literal, which is uh, the text inside of it right here. This is a string. And surrounding them we have these quotation marks that just indicates where the string starts and ends. And then, of course, our semicolon to finish it off. Um, this is storing a string literal. That's just uh, the text as you see it right here. And this is the most common way of uh, making a string, so we use this one. Um, but it's also worth noting that there are a few other ways to do this. For instance, we have this second method right here, and that's where we're um, storing a string and we're using the constructor, right? So here's the new keyword, So and then here's the class name and then the constructor being called. So it, it's another um, valid way of declaring a string. And this time we have the literal uh, inside of here, inside of the constructor as an argument. Um, not very common, but there is um, reason to introduce this and just to discuss it later on. I'll get to that later. And then of course, there's another way of declaring a string. Uh, this time we're using this constructor again, but um, inside of the constructor, we're declaring a new character array, and um, the character array has the characters A, B, and C within it. Um, typically, in older programming languages like C, um, strings are represented as arrays of characters. So this is one way um, to approach a string in Java. It's just a different way of thinking about it. This is probably the least common way you would see it. You might never see it this way, but it's good just to um, be familiar with it. But as far as like an introductory course is concerned, this first method is the only one you need to be concerned about. So what's the difference between strings and other variables that you're used to? Well, uh, strings are immutable, meaning they can't be changed once they're declared. So even if you use some method to concatenate it or get a certain part of it or change it in some way, um, all those methods are simply going to return new strings. They're not going to change the original one. Um, another way that strings can differ a bit from other objects is that if two of the same string literals are declared, they are only stored in memory once if and share um, a reference. So here we have string A is equal to hello. Hello is stored uh, in stack memory. So imagine this is our stack here. And we have hello. And this is at a certain memory address whatever it is, not important. Um, A is going to refer to that place in memory. Uh, but once we declare this variable B, and it's also equal to hello, B is going to point to the same spot in memory, or in the RAM. This is not the case, however, uh, when you use the constructor. Remember, the constructor is when you use the new keyword. Uh, the new keyword in Java allocates memory on the heap, not the stack. Um, so in this case, uh, down here, uh, string C is equal to new string hello. And then we have string D equal to new string hello. They're going to be stored in separate places in the heap. Meaning that these two um, references are going to be different. They're going to have different memory addresses associated with them. So here's some common string methods that are used and that you should probably know uh, for an introductory level course. So um, let's just say that we have a, an example string s and we have it set equal to test. We can do the following things to s. We can get the length of it by calling s.length and that returns the length of the string. In this case, it would be four. Um, we can do s.car at and then it takes an integer i, so it returns the character at index i. So if we did s.car uh, at, and we
and we passed in an integer, say, 0, uh, the value represented by that is going to be uh, the character at index 0. Remember, these are start up from 0, and they go up to the length minus 1. So the character um, at 0 is going to end up being t. Of course, we also have substring, which is going to uh, return the substring from the start index and ending at the end index, but not including it. So if we did substring from uh, 0 to 2, it'll just capture these first two letters and put them in a string. Then, of course, there's index of, which returns the first occurrence of the substring. So if we try to find the index of E, it would return 1 because that's the index that it's stored at. Note that if we tried to get the index of t, it would return 0 because that's the first index it's stored at, even if, um, even though, rather, uh, t is also stored over here at index 3. So now you might be wondering how to compare strings. Well, uh, we have a few ways of doing this. So let's say that we have two strings, str1 and str2. Uh, we can compare the two by using the compare to method. So um, it'll return a negative number if str1 is alphabetically less than str2, uh, positive if it's greater, or zero if it's equal. So if we had something like, um, if we were comparing two numbers like, or two letters, two strings rather, um, str1 being abc, and um, str1 is abc, and then str2 is equal to, say, def. Um, str1.compared to is going to return um, a negative number. So that would be less than 0 in this example. Um, if they were equal, however, it would just return 0. So another method we could use is dot equals. That returns a Boolean value. Um, if they're equal, it'll return true. If they're not the same string, it'll return false. Note that this is not the same as the double equal sign that we would use for numbers um, because they are objects, not primitives. The double equal sign operator will compare references, like memory addresses. So it will sometimes work if you remember um, the discussion about uh, using the constructor or using simply literals. So we also might want to concatenate strings, and to do that you can simply use the plus sign. So one way you could do this is given strings str1 and str2, we can combine the two um, by setting, by using this plus sign, just like you would add them together, str1 plus str2. So note that this isn't always the most memory efficient method, um, especially in loops, because every time plus is used, the result is stored in memory. Um, so I would recommend that you use a, the string builder for that, but for an introductory level discussion, it's not very important. Um, that only matters if you're doing more complicated stuff. So um, this is the only way you need to be concerned with for now, the plus sign. Now sometimes you want to have special formatting of your strings during printing or writing to a file. So slash n typically represents um, a new line, right? So uh, during printing, so it'll move the text to the next line. So um, it'll look at it one by one, it'll print out H, it'll print out E, um, L, L, O. All of those are going to appear on the console, one after the other. Then when it hits this new line character, it escapes and goes to the next line, and then it begins printing um, each character one by one until it's done. So slash T does something similar. It represents a tab during printing, just like how you would hit tab in a Word document. Um, you can have, um, you can print out a tab just using slash t. So as you can see, hello slash t world returns hello tab space and then world. So here's an example um, of printing out triangles of stars uh, using these concepts that we've discussed before. So here we declare our string um, 
tests and then um, we store example one inside of it. Then um, in each one of these for loops, we're going from i equals zero to five, i plus plus, meaning that we're just gonna go up by one each time. We're going to be running this inside loop and we're gonna be running this inside loop i times because j goes from zero to i, incrementing by one each time. So we're gonna keep printing it, uh, we're gonna keep concatenating on. So remember, using the plus would concatenate strings. Plus equals will concatenate it um, to this string right here and store the result back. So we're gonna keep concatenating and running this loop a bunch of times. The first time through, um, it will print, it will concatenate it zero times because um, i would be equal to zero and j would be equal to zero, so that's gonna return false. But the next time through, it'll do it once because i is incremented one time. The second time through, it'll be incremented again, so it'll run twice, etc., until we get this nice little pattern here. So here's another example of using these string methods. So here we declare our string a, and we set it equal to example, and then we have a temporary string equal to the empty string. That's just two quotation marks um, back to back with nothing between them. That's commonly referred to as the empty string. Uh, then next we go from i equals zero to the length, and then we uh, increment each time. So we're gonna go through each and every character. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set temp, which starts off as our empty string, equal to um, the character at the given uh, index, whatever i is at the time, um, and concatenate on temp at the end. So what this is going to do is it's going to um, it's going to reverse the string, right? So if we do a system out print line, it's going to print out example spelled backwards because it's going to keep putting the beginning characters at the end and the end characters at the beginning. And then in this next part of the program, um, if we, we can use the dot equals method to check if it's a palindrome or not. Remember a palindrome is something that's spelled the same both forwards and backwards. So something like level would be a palindrome. Something like Bob would be a palindrome. But uh, something like let would not be a palindrome, right? Because it's spelled uh, differently forwards and backwards. So if temp, which is our reverse string, is equal to a, our original string, we can print out the word palindrome. Otherwise, it's not a palindrome, so we print out not a palindrome, which is why it prints out not a palindrome, because example and this string right here that we reversed are not the same. And that should conclude um, this presentation. Thanks for watching.